Hi guys, this video is going to teach you how to use sheets to graph the data from the Penny Density Lab. So I'm going to use some data that um, I have from years past. It does not correlate to the data that you're collecting in the PowerPoint. So don't use these numbers, but I wanted to show you how you can do this. And you, of course, would use the numbers that you are recording for the data sets that you have. So to begin with, I'm going to put in the volume reading um, for my pennies in this first column. And the reason we do that is because naturally these programs um, like to use that column A, um, the first column of two columns, whether it's A, B, C, or D, um, to be the X axis on our graph. And that's what we're gonna wanna have in our graph, the volume beyond the X axis. And so we simply would give our heading um, to that column and I'm going to put in some readings. Now this is just of the pennies themselves, not of the reading of the graduated cylinder. For that, remember, you have to subtract out the initial graduated cylinder reading. So in years past, um, I had some data collected for some smaller numbers of pennies than you have in yours. So you can see some volumes there. And then I'm going to go ahead and in the next column, I'm going to put the mass, which is what I want to have graph on the y axis. And this had some more significant figures. So let me get those written in for you real quick. Again, this is my data. You will use the data that you are gathering from the PowerPoint. Oops, I messed that one up. Go back and fix that. Now in years past, we would have students use Excel to do their graphing um, here on our laptops at school. Um, and we have that application um, that's available. It could do some more features than is available to you on your Office 365. So I thought probably easier to figure out how to do this through sheets. Not the best way to do it, but it will work for our purposes. So after I put in the data, I'm going to simply click and drag to highlight the data that I just put in. Then I'm going to come up here to insert and I'm going to go down to chart. I'm going to click on that. Sometimes it takes a second for things to come up, so be patient. And it will probably choose a line chart for you already. I actually don't want that for ours. I would rather that you choose a scatter chart. So here under suggested, there's scatter, or if you go down here further, you'll find a scatter chart down here as well. So I'm gonna click on that. And I am going to come down here to the, let me see, mass, um, I'm gonna, actually I'm gonna click on customize first and I'm gonna come over here to series. And then I'm gonna look at that mass and I'm gonna scroll down and I'm gonna put in a trend line. So once I have my trend line, you can see what it does is it gives you the best fit line for the data set that we just put in. Here's the other very important part. Down here under label, it says none right now. But what I want to do is change that to use equation. And what that's going to do is it's going to show me the equation of the line, the best fit line from that data set. And so what I can do now is I can see the y equals mx plus b equation. Now this 8.85 for my data set is the M or the slope. And slope, remember, is Y minus Y over X minus X. And if I look here, I can see that I've got mass for my Y and volume for my X. And that means that the slope is giving us density. So the density of this penny set, which by the way, were the pre-1982 pennies, are given to me here. So in your data, if you want to keep track of this a little bit better, you can change the title and use your data and make this the pre-1982 pennies. 
Now what we can do is come up here and do it again. Um, doesn't really matter what columns you use. Maybe I'll use D and E. And again, I'm going to put in my volume in milliliters and my mass in grams. And now I'm gonna use the data that I have for the post 1983 pennies. So here I'm gonna put in my volumes. Again, you're gonna use what's on the PowerPoint readings, not what I have here. And the mass. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to highlight that data set. I'm going to insert chart. And you can see it's kind of smart. It knows you wanted a scatter plot from before. So it's giving you a scatter plot now. And I am going to come down to um, customize, right? Series. I'm going to add a trend line and I'm going to add the label of the equation. And you can see for this set, it gives me a different slope standing for the new density of this data set. And again, to keep track, I'm going to change the title uh, post 1983 pennies. Okay. I'm a perfectionist. I think I did it this way on the other one. Cool. So now I have these two graphs that I can see on this spreadsheet. Okay. And um, this is an attachment that you can make to your assignment. So I would like to see this attached to your assignment. Um, you don't have to print it if you don't want to, um, even though I, I had mentioned in part of our presentation that, you know, you're going to have to submit a PDF of this. It would be fine just to submit this sheet to the assignment um, for your graphs. Now, in your lab manual, you have some other um, things that you're going to do with those densities and you're going to answer some more questions about them. But this will at least help you get your graphs. Um, really important to be able to do things like this um, because I'm telling you now, in science, people are not graphing by hand. They are going to be having instruments, take measurements for them most likely, and being able to um, manipulate graphs and, and get them to give you the information that you want is an important skill to have. So I hope that was helpful and I look forward to seeing the labs with your data.